shake of a martini, pull up a chair, and let's go thrifty. This is Mid-Century Wasting. Welcome to Mid-Century Wasted. I'm Jamie. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, I have a very long overdue haul video for you. I am really happy to finally be getting through all of this stuff. Everything on the table here has been packed away in a box for an entire year since last summer. And I'm just now finally getting around to filming the haul, editing the shopping video, posting it on YouTube. You know, this whole, this whole thing that I'm supposed to do consistently on my channel to make it a good channel. But last summer I fell behind. Now, 2020, here we are. I'm finally able to show you all these goodies that I got at those four, count them four, estate sales that I went to in one day last year. That was quite a few hours of shopping, a lot of driving around, and it wore me out. But as you'll see here very soon, I got a lot of cool stuff and it was totally, totally worth it. I am actually going to break up this haul into two parts this time. So I'm going to start with the two houses I went to in Huntington Beach. Part two of the haul video will be the two houses I went to in Garden Grove. And that's just the order that I went to the houses on that day anyway. So it works out great. I started out with two estate sales in Huntington Beach, where I live. One was downtown in the most perfect and beautiful and wonderful neighborhood where I could only dream of owning a very, very old house. <laughs> Do I have like $2 million to buy a house? No, maybe I'll win the lotto someday. Hey, it happens. People win the lotto all the time. The house that I went to, yes, it was on beautiful street. Yes, there were beautiful houses all around it, but this house was kind of run down, kind of a bummer inside. There was a fantastic fireplace. There were good bones, as they say. And that house was not in the greatest of shape, but that's the kind of house I would wanna buy. I don't like houses that have been completely gutted and remodeled. I like original houses, even if they're falling down a little bit dilapidated, that's my dream because then I can restore it rather than renovate it. I can restore it. I digress. I could talk about mid-century architecture all day and that's not what this is about. This is about the stuff that was inside of the house. Inside of the house, it was a little pricey, a lot of stuff. Also, I will say that I did not exactly know at the time it was a 30% off day. I may have purchased more things if I knew from the get-go that it was a 30% off day. That wonderful Franciscan fine china. Ugh, I still have like nightmares about not buying that. It only would have been like 25 bucks, something like that, which is a lot, I know, but that Franciscan fine china is a little different. It's a little fancier. It's a little higher quality, I guess. It wasn't just your run of the mill stuff. But let's talk about what I did buy. I'm gonna try to start with like inside the house stuff. I think this was the first thing I got was a very old recipe box filled with recipes. I don't know if I've really talked about this on this channel yet. I may have, I may not have. You may be new, this might be the first video you've ever seen of mine. You've never heard me talk about it even if I did talk about it before. I love picking up old stuffed full recipe boxes. And these have my favorite combos of recipes where some are handwritten, some are typed, some are clipped out of magazines. It is just a whole messy hodgepodge of recipes. It'll probably take me maybe an hour or so to look through all of these. And that is what I call a really good Friday night. <laughs> I just really love looking at people's home recipes. Cookbooks are great too. I love old cookbooks, but handwritten, you know, passed down from generation to generation family recipes are my jam. So anyway, this recipe box to me is just, it's invaluable. It's its worth more than I could ever sell it for to me. So I will keep this, I'll look through it. And I actually thought individual little handwritten uh, recipe cards would make really fun package toppers. 
And I have accumulated a lot of these. I think I can start paring them down if it's something that's maybe too fancy for me. And I know there's no chance I'll ever be able to cook something like that. I'll send it on a package topper to somebody who purchased something from me on eBay. That's the plan with these. Now, okay, everything in this house, I failed to mention, came to about $22. So I, and I don't really know exactly what individual prices were on everything. Some things had price stickers, a lot of things didn't, and she sort of just bundled everything at the end. The next thing I got is this hilarious, I hate to cook book. I do not hate to cook. I like to cook. I don't think I'm a very skilled cook. And my husband cooks a lot too, which is very helpful. No, I don't hate to cook, but I do prefer it if he cooks. <laughs> I would rather have the food cooked for me and just eat it. But this book is my new favorite cookbook and I have glanced through it already. This would make a hilarious gift to someone, especially like at a bridal shower or a wedding. I'll show you the cover one more time. Nice and close there. So the artwork obviously is what caught my eye. This was originally $3.75 when it was printed and it is copyright 1960. Chapter one, 30 day by day entrees or the rock pile. Chapter two, the leftover or every family needs a dog. Chapter three, vegetable salads, salad dressings, or this side of berry berry. That means chapter four, spuds and other starches, or ballast is a girl's best friend. I have no idea what this means. I'm assuming these are like jokes. I get the every family needs a dog one, but chapter five, potluck suppers, or how to bring the water for the lemonade. Okay, I get that one. I would be the one that brings the water for the lemonade, 100%. So I get that joke. Chapter six, company's coming or your back's to the wall. <laughs> Chapter seven, luncheon for the girls or wait till you taste Maybelle's peanut butter aspic. Oh my God, I am in love with this author. <laughs> Chapter eight, canapes and heartburn specials or who started this business? Chapter nine, desserts or people are too fat anyway. Chapter 10, little kids parties or they only came for the balloons. Chapter 11, last minute suppers or this is the story of your life. Chapter 12, household hints or what to do when your churn paddle sticks. <laughs> Chapter 13, good cooksmanship or how to talk a good fight. Equivalents, etc or dreary details that you certainly have no intention of remembering. All right, book. Introduction, some women, it is said, like to cook. This book is not for them. This book is for those of us who hate to, who have learned through hard experience that some activities become no less painful through repetition, childbearing, paying taxes, cooking. This book is for those of us who want to fold our big dishwater hands around a dry martini instead of a wet flounder come the end of a long day. I'm literally going to sit down in bed and read through this entire book. Cookbooks, you don't usually do that. You skim through them and you find an interesting recipe and you read it. This book, I'm gonna read it like a novel. <laughs> and I'm really excited about it, if you haven't noticed. Most of the rest of the stuff I'm selling. And I just want to point that out because I know a lot of people lately that I've been conversing with haven't quite realized that I have an eBay store. I am an eBay reseller. So please go check it out. The link is in the description down below. I don't just keep all this stuff. My house is filled to the brim as it is with stuff that I'm selling. So I definitely am not keeping all of this. This stuff is for resale except for the things that I mentioned that I'm keeping. Anyway, moving right along. Well, now see, and here I'm about to say I'm keeping the stuff in this bag too. It's not all of it. Oh, I'll, I'll go ahead and say that. I feel like this is gonna take a while to talk about all of this stuff. So I'm not gonna talk about all of it right now. What I will probably do, I'm just making a little bit of room here, is post about this stuff over time on Instagram. My Instagram is at midcenturywasted. It's really easy to find. Go follow me on there because I do add supplemental content. Now, 
in the shopping video, you saw me rifling through a box of random photos, report cards, and a very gross old retainer. I picked out all the little random keepsake things. If you want to call an old retainer a keepsake, I don't know. Do people keep their old retainers? I didn't know that was a thing. I picked all those out and I left them behind because I just, what am I going to do with it? I'm sure they probably got, ended up getting thrown away anyway, but I didn't want to be the one to do it. And I didn't want to bring them home. And I didn't want it to sit in a box in my house for a really long time. So I picked all that stuff out and then I bought the entire box of photos and papers. Part of the reason why, first of all, I love photos and ephemera anyway. If you watch my channel, you know this. But part of the reason why I just went ahead and bought the entire dang box is because this is local stuff for me. This is Huntington Beach specific stuff in here. And I collect Huntington Beach stuff too. So this was like a box of golden treasures, the thing that sent it over the edge. And I was just like, oh yeah, no, I'm just getting the whole box from Buffums. It says Long Beach Santa Ana down at the bottom there. I don't know if you can make that out, but Buffums apparently was a department store. This is obviously Christmas. We've got some very like 60s looking angels here. Old Santa photos. Karen 1959. I'm gonna take it out carefully here. The dress, the wreath hanging in the background. Please look at how precious this is. Look at her dress. Look at the way she's looking at Santa. I love vintage Christmas and this is just, look at her little purse. Look at her tiny little darling purse. What a little darling angel child this is. She is like the poster child of 1955. Oh, Karen, what a darling little Karen she is. I wonder if she grew up and made a lot of complaints at restaurants. There's that one. Here's another one. It looks like Karen got a, a sibling. Karen's looking a little bit older. Look at that Santa. I think Santa was dipping into the eggnog in between children here. Buffums. We got lots more Buffums here. I didn't even know that there were that this many in here. So here's that same 59. Oh, Karen and Bonnie. Bonnie was born. She just, they took some individual pictures. They took some together pictures. Here's from the same year. Here's just Bonnie by herself. Looking at that Santa. Bonnie looks like she might be about to cry. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if Bonnie likes Santa all that much. All right, and now here's that second year where sweet Karen is looking a little bit more grown up and Santa's a little drunk. There's just multiples of basically all the same thing. So, I mean, as weird as it sounds, I know people like me love this kind of stuff and like to use it in their Christmas decor. You could even take the picture out use the picture somewhere in like a vignette or a display or something and then use this card too as something else. You can cut the card up, you could use it for junk journaling and scrapbooking and all sorts of things. So since there's so many of these that are basically exactly the same, I have no problem selling some of these. So that's a pleasant surprise for me because I figured I would end up just having to keep all of this stuff. <laughs> so, okay, local ephemera. Huntington Beach specific stuff for me here. This is a student grade progress report from Huntington Beach High School in 1969. Um, I'll just read it first. P-E-B, crafts, C, French, C, geography, C, pre-algebra, C, and English one, C. And this was a ninth grader, this was a freshman, and I'm gonna cover up the last names and the address just so that you can kind of see what it looks like. Now, the thing that's the most hilarious to me, this is from 1969, and my report cards and my progress reports looked exactly like this in the 90s. The school system did not upgrade the progress report system the entire time. It is just hilarious to me that from 1969, probably earlier than 1969, but at least from 1969 through the late 90s and early 2000s, they still had the same report card system. Hilarious to me. All right, this is hall photography, which you see down there at the bottom. If this is a senior photo, oh yeah, it says in here, 1971. So hall photography, 
is the exact same photo studio that I went to for my senior pictures and my cap and gown pictures and all of that. They were the ones that did our annual photos. And look at 1971 is just oozing all over this lovely lady. Her eye makeup and her hair and her eyebrows. <laughs> I love it. And I just love that it's haul photography. Now there's a bunch of just random baby pictures and things. I just don't, this video would be too long if I go through every single one of these. Now this is darling and kind of sad that it didn't end up being kept by family or anything, but it says mother. So be a cute thing to put out for a Mother's Day display. And there's a baby handprint inside. Isn't that sweet? And like a little poem, Kona Lane's Playroom. Sounds like maybe they made this at like a preschool or something or a daycare. So that's kind of, you know, sad, but I can't tell you how often I come across these things that seem like they would be extremely personal and kept by the family. And for whatever reason, they're just not. The answer could be as simple as the people never had any children. Some family lines, they just, they die out if people don't have kids or if they don't stay close, there's no one who wants this stuff when somebody passes away. So yes, it's sad, but it's also, I feel like I'm doing a service by appreciating it and also passing it to other people who appreciate it, who will want to display the cute, cute darling girl from Buffums and it gives it all a second life. I'm preemptively talking about the inevitable comments of why didn't the family want any of that? Well, sometimes there's no family left and I, I find that more often than not. Here is, oh, it's a note. That was a sticker. Oh my goodness. This is, <laughs> I love it. First of all, there's that cool artwork on the front. That's classic in and, in and of itself. This is an invitation for a slumber party. June 11th, 1969, bring sleeping bag, wear, and it's got an address, time after the graduation dance, given by, and then a name and an RSVP phone number. How freaking cool is that? And I love the artwork on the front. More photos, holy cow. Look at this picture, or all these pictures. Look at what's in those pictures. Do you see the little pedal car and like the radio flyer? <laughs> oh my God. I think it's like one of those radio flyer tricycles. Is there a better picture of it? Dude wagon? I think it says dude wagon on the side of that pedal car. What? Never heard of such a thing. And it's got a little starburst in it. I don't even know if anybody's even enjoying this right now, but I get such a kick out of looking at old photos like this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the house because that's, that's the backyard. I'm realizing now this is the backyard of that house. I remember walking out and there was that bar was right there. Yep. So this is the same house. That's crazy and so cool. Here's another Christmas picture and look at the, the cards. Like, yeah, the kids are cute and the Santa right there, but look at the cards up on the mantle. Those are so cool. Christmas, December, 1959. I can't see the name, but it says my poodle. <laughs> so they had a poodle. Oh, here's a clipping from the Orange County Register, our local newspaper. It is a birth announcement. Oh no, first birthday announcement. Refreshments were served with the beautiful yellow birthday cake topped with a scene from the storybook Cinderella and centered with one yellow candle. The little honoree received many lovely gifts. Can you imagine a time when people would put announcements like that in the newspaper? What? This certifies that we have recorded a litter from the American Kennel Club, breed Japanese Spaniel, one male, two females, whelped on February 17th, 1961. I had no idea this was a thing. But there's a certificate of them breeding their Japanese Spaniel and they got three puppies out of it. That's very bizarre. Um, so here's some much older photos. Well, you can just look at the car. They're in kind of like flapper clothes almost. Much, much older photos here. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, nothing makes me happier than Christmas tree photos with all the tinsel. All the tinsel in the world. Never enough tinsel. Apparently my grandma, my father's mom, called it trinsel and there was never enough trinsel. Never enough trinsel on the tree. And here's a naked baby. 
I bet this person never thought that someday some crazy lady would be showing their naked baby picture on a YouTube channel. <laughs> no one could have predicted that one back in the 1950s. I did look through these. And there are some 1974 beach pictures from my local beach. And I can tell you it's my local beach because if you look really closely where the sun is, you can see the oil derricks. I think that's what they're called. Oil derricks, the oil rigs out there in the ocean. Very iconic thing, not a lovely thing, but it is a visual cue that means you are in Huntington Beach, California, is the oil rigs out in the ocean. Now these pictures are very faded, but I can fix them, at least enhance them and make them look better on the computer. And this one is the pinnacle for me. This is standing on Main Street in Huntington Beach, looking straight down the pier. And there's the old Maxwell's building and it's the old pier, the old wooden pier before the waves came and knocked it over, if you know any Huntington Beach history. So you see right here, all the way uh, in the background, that's the old end of the pier. And this building right here is basically where Dukes is now, if you've been here before. Um, that was Maxwell's, at least when I was a kid. I don't know if it was in the 70s, but. So I'm definitely gonna scan this and make it look better so I can really like see what's going on there. Okay, so that was the last of the stuff that I actually got inside the house. Mm, I may have gotten this inside the house too, so I'll show it now just in case. It's an effluent. That's what my two-year-old calls elephants. He calls them effluents. And I die from the cuteness because it's adorable. But anyway, this elephant's pretty adorable too. He's a planter, he's green. He's got his trunk up. He doesn't really have a maker on the bottom. There's just some like carvings in the clay. He's pretty darn cute. I believe he had a $5 price tag on him, 30% off and then bundled with everything else. I probably paid probably around $3 for him. He's got some crazing, but other than that, and he's got some like dirt or mineral kind of deposits around the, the edge. I tried briefly to scrub them off and I can tell that you could like pick them off. You could scratch it off. So I'll work a little harder on him to make him perfect before I list him for sale. Speaking of working hard, <laughs> I had to work really hard on the rest of this stuff to clean it up. Because if you noticed in the shopping video, all the stuff inside the house was, was pretty well kept. It was pretty nice and it was pricey by the time I got out to the garage and honestly where I found all the best stuff for me anyway everything was filthy and I don't mean just dirt or dust it was like a slimy tacky tar grime on everything I don't know if they smoked the house didn't smell like smoke I don't know if it was just years of being out in the garage unpacked just on shelves or something. I don't know. I don't know. But I had to scrub. I had to soak. I had to use a magic eraser in places. But I got this. I got this stuff. Man, I got it nice. I would drink coffee out of this right now. This thing is sanitized. <laughs> Trust me. I'm not a germaphobe, but if I suspect anything is even slightly dingy, I'm not eating out of it or drinking out of it. Like there's no way. It needs to be in scalding hot water and scrubbed with soap, maybe a couple times. So might as well show these. I got three very pretty Jadeite Fire King. I would say these are teacups, not really coffee mugs. Although you're welcome to drink coffee out of it. Off the top of my head, I do not know the name of this pattern, but I did look up the, what would you call this? The logo or the, make your mark on the bottom because you can date based on the way that the logo looks on the bottom. And this is the Oven Fire King Glass logo. And I have a little chart and I looked it up and these mugs date from the mid 1940s to the early 1950s. So right in my wheelhouse, for sure. Now that they're clean, they're in perfect condition. There's no chips or cracks or anything even slightly flawed on these. They're beautiful. And the only thing I did not do is look up the value. So I'll look up the value and put it right here. There's three of them. I don't know if these are more likely to sell just one-offs, but I will sell them. I will list them. These were marked $2 a piece. 
And so there's six of them. So I got the three of them for $6 minus 30%, $1.20, about $4.20, give or take, for three of them. I also picked up a bunch of these Taylor Smith Taylor, Taylor Stone Cafe pattern plates. Now there are saucers, teacup saucers, as well as the little bread plates. And there's three saucers and six bread plates, but some of the bread plates are chipped up. A couple of them are. And oddly enough, if maybe somebody who is more of an expert on this kind of stuff than I, some of them are very dark around the edges and some of them are very light around the edges. And I don't really know what that means. <laughs> But this is a pattern of China that I am always on the lookout for. I happen to very much like it. I think I will be reselling it and the chipped ones will end up being mine because I tend to just keep the junk for myself. <laughs> so I do not have like a flawless collection. I tend to keep all of the chipped, broken, unresellable items. And these, they cleaned up fair, but they are all a little bit imperfect. You know, the edges might have some just kind of staining and, and scuffing. They're ever so slightly flawed, I would say. They're not mint condition. I believe they were probably very well loved and well used. Okay, we got two planters. This one, I happened to sell the sticker on it. That one was $5. Um, oh yeah, these cafe plates, they weren't, they're were part of the bundle deal. They weren't um, priced. So this is Hyalin, Hyalin, Hyslin. I don't know what that says necessarily. See if maybe I can figure it out by the time I edit this video. But I just thought this was a really nice little planter. But check out the details on the, on the edges there. I thought it kind of had a, almost a, deco look to it. This was filthy as well. I cleaned it up, it cleaned up beautifully. It's got the nice drain hole in the bottom too, which you don't always see. And this color, this rust, burnt orange, brown color is like perfect for right now for fall. So that's definitely something that will be getting listed ASAP. This planter is California pottery, FC 13, if you have any idea what that means. I don't, but this is a very neat kind of basket weave in an avocado green, but you can also see there's, there's some nice like turquoise happening in this drip glaze here, especially on the inside rim. I was very pleased, very pleasantly surprised, I'll say, when I cleaned this up and I saw that this had some like hints of turquoise in it because I do love the avocado green, but you know how I love me my turquoise more than anything. So, so I thought that planter was neat. It's, it's a hefty, like pretty good size planter. And I'm calling it a planter just because kind of everything is a planter to me. This is pottery. You could easily just make this a fruit bowl or something. You could do anything you want with it really. And I just, I really like that kind of basket, a basket weave, but it's also almost like a fish scale kind of pattern. It's just, it's different and I liked it and I like the shape of it is different too. So there you go. Only a couple things left. I got this cream and sugar set. And I mean, you know, just by looking at it, it's the, the lines of it. I just, I had to, there was no, I had no choice. I had to buy this. It's just, that's the shape, you know? And it had the lid, the cream and sugar, they're in good shape, the cream, is in excellent shape. I don't see anything wrong with the creamer. The sugar just has, you know, it's got the flea bites around the, around the rim. It just feels rough. There's one right here. If you can see it at all. There's, there's like a little chip. That's more than a flea bite. That's a chip around the other edges. Maybe there's two chips around the other edges. It's just kind of, got a little staining, got a little chipping. And then there is like a hairline crack on the inside, right around, right around the edge. Is it the end of the world? No, it's the sugar bowl. You're not putting liquids in it. I would be more hesitant to sell it if the cream had a crack in it because then it's like, it's kind of unusable. But the hairline does not go through. No, it doesn't. The bottom is completely intact. 
These are unmarked. I have no idea the maker of these. I don't think it goes with this, but it might. I know sometimes patterns like this, it has solid pieces that go with it, but I'm, so I'm not 100% on that. And I haven't looked this up yet. There were also two coffee cups that match. The coffee cups are kind of in bad shape, unfortunately. And I couldn't really tell because they were so dirty. Um, oh, by God, you know, I thought this was a chip, but now that I'm feeling it, it's actually a manufacturer defect. You see that white mark down at the bottom? It's completely smooth and glazed over. I thought that was a big old chip, but it's not. It's just a manufacturing defect where they missed some green paint on the outside before they fired it. So that's not as bad. Unfortunately, this one on the rim right up here, you can see it's chipped. It's a big old chip and you wouldn't want to drink out of this cup. As far as resale value goes, I am going to list these all together and the value is in the cream and the sugar. I'm basically going to just be throwing the coffee cups in for free. I'm going to price it based on whatever the value is on these. And then you get some matching coffee cups. You can throw away the chipped one if you want to. I really hope you wouldn't because I wouldn't. I would put a succulent in here before I would throw it away. Last, definitely not least, I got an entire roll of vintage wallpaper. Now, long ago, in one of my very first videos, I talked about picking up two rolls of vintage wallpaper. I have yet to list those two rolls of vintage wallpaper on eBay. I have no idea if vintage wallpaper is something anyone is interested in actually purchasing and using in their home. I know if I had a home that I was renovating or restoring, I would want time period correct wallpaper to put in my home. But that's me because I want a time capsule home. I don't want a Chip and Joanna home. No offense, no offense, no offense, no offense. Please don't un unsubscribe from my channel just because I diss Chip and Joanna. But it's just not my style. I want powder rooms with vintage gold and avocado floral wallpaper. This is epic. I mean, it's epic. I don't see, I'm kind of unrolling this to show it to you and then also see if it has any kind of date or anything on the back. And it does not, it says six run, and then like a serial number. Roll it back up. This is in great shape. The, obviously the, the very edge is not, not nice, but it's a very decent sized roll. I'm sure you could, you could do like an entire powder room with this for sure. I don't know exactly how much is on here. If you had a really big room, maybe not. I'd say whatever's on a standard, standard size roll of, wallpaper, this is probably it. I do need to list all of that vintage wallpaper because I'm not gonna be using it. I don't own a home, I rent. So I can't be wallpapering the bathroom as much as I wish I could because thousand percent I would use this. This is like harvest gold and avocado green floral. It's amazing. So anyway, that's everything just from house number one, if you can believe it. And I did say, this haul was going to be from the first two houses. I only went through one house because in the second Huntington Beach house, I didn't buy anything. Not one single thing, unfortunately. Now, editing back the video, maybe I would have bought the little Swedish snowball candle holder that was $3. I didn't really know what those were at the time. I was drawn to it. I was looking at it for a good long while and then yelling at myself as I was editing the video saying, dang it, why didn't I buy that? Because that's actually something that I am drawn to and have been looking for now for Swedish stuff. And those look really cool when they're lit up with the tea candle in it at Christmas time because they, they really do look like ice or like a snowball. So unfortunately I didn't buy anything there. I got kind of bored as I was walking through there and I knew that the Garden Grove sales were out there calling my name. So I kind of just sped through the rest of that house and then went out to Garden Grove. So the next video is going to be the haul video from the two houses that I went to in Garden Grove. If you haven't watched the shopping videos, you might want to go watch those now. If you like anything that you saw here today, check out my eBay store or feel free to send me an email. Both are in the description box below. And 
I am a reseller. I am a reseller. <laughs> this is not all just for me. Oh my God, it would be a hoarder house. It already is hoarded enough for the stuff I'm selling. So thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video coming soon. Until then, bye everyone.